Please help me welcome Tristan Pai Buick. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the organizers for having me here today, and I would like to thank the voters of New Mexico for turning my adopted state blue. This afternoon, I would like to honor three of the most important women in my life by sharing the lessons that I learned from them and that I carry with me daily and into the classroom. When I was about seven years old and my sister five, our mother, Jerry Buick, gathered us to her and said, rather mysteriously, when you get older, you're going to hear something, but I want to tell you that it is not so. You are going to hear that if you are black, you must work 10 times harder to achieve half of what a white person achieves. She paused to let the words resonate with us, and then she continued, no, you don't. You don't have to work 10 times harder than anyone. What you have to do is fight for what is right and just. It is a lesson that we have never forgotten and that I take with me. She knew that we would have enough stress by being black women in this world, and she refused to add to it, teaching us instead to relish the fight. Relish the fight, that was the first lesson. In the early 90s, while in graduate school at a predominantly white institution, I would encounter a second mentor. The early 90s were an interesting time because such institutions were having their first experiments in voluntary diversification, both in terms of faculty and the student body. By the time that Sharon Patton arrived at the University of Michigan's Art History Department, I was four years into a graduate program and pretty miserable, in part because as much as our mother had prepared us I didn't know how to respond to my white advisor, who was also a woman, and who would say things like, you have a barometer for race, and now that your minority scholarship funding is ending, you are just like the other students. Sharon taught me to respond simply with the question, what do you mean by that? And to keep repeating it, until the person uttering those things is forced to deconstruct their own racism. Sharon taught me to question racism and to question sexism. She taught me to never allow someone else's prejudices to become my burden. That was the second lesson. I first encountered the art of Howardina Pendel after I graduated from college and while I was still deciding whether or not to attend graduate school. In the mid-80s, she published an expose of art world racism that rocked the self-congratulatory delusions of New York's museum and gallery system. I was amazed by the amount of work that, it, that went into knowing what she had done, interviewing every museum and gallery in the five borough regions and asking how many women had they shown, how many non-white artists. She would later incorporate her findings into a traditional art piece, but I consider her original research and publication of her findings inseparable from her work as an artist. She was instrumental in my decision to go to graduate school and I continue to follow her career only to meet her 10 years later in the mid-90s and for her to become a personal friend and mentor. She continues to, con to create an art of risk. She is a fighter who questions and who has seen retaliation and punishment for the light that she shines on art world racism and sexism. She is a fighter who, some who is sometimes tired of the fight, but she persists. And through the miracle and example of her persistence, she taught me never to concede the center, to never play in the margins or view them as a place of empowerment, 
Because what you end up doing is reinforcing the center. Instead, you speak to power where it locates itself. That was the third lesson. But I have one more. And it is something that I learned because racism and sexism will always find some new way to surprise you. You can be braced and you can be ready, but it always has something new to pull out of its hat. In 1996, while finishing my dissertation, I had a full-time job in museum education at the Art Institute of Chicago. And the more that I observed, the more vociferous I was in my observations of art world racism as manifested in the encyclopedic museum collections housed within the United States. The exhibitions that the Art Institute of Chicago rejected, their refusal to actively collect, works of abstraction by non-white and non-male artists, for example. And how did my boss, who was white and who was a woman, respond? She responded with a question that was not really a question at all. She said, well, we hired you, didn't we? After her question that was not a question, I had to think long and hard about it, and what I found and what I felt was a deep sense of recognition that I had heard this before and that I would hear it again. That everything Mama, Sharon, and Howardina had taught me brought me to this moment. And so I have a question and a lesson for you from me. What does it mean to use my body and my presence to silence my voice? What does it mean to use my body and my presence to silence my voice. And this I promise you, I fight, I question, I center myself, all aspects of myself, my body as well as my voice, and will not allow this world to force me to live a fragmented existence. I will never, I will never show up only be, to be told to shut up. I will never concede the center. I will never take on someone else's burdens and prejudices. And I swear on and by my mother that I will relish the fight. Thank you.